This largely overlooked iteration of Street Fighter 2 deserves talking about more. Few games in history are as important and iconic as that of Street Fighter 2. This, of course, was not only the game that rejuvenated the arcade scene, but the game that would function as essentially the blueprint for all fighting games going forward. So holding these thoughts, when we take into account that there is a version of the game out there that is packed to the brim with cool features, which cannot be found anywhere else, you just know that this obscurity deserves a deeper look. So with all of that said, hello ladies and gentlemen, big daddy top hat here. This is the often forgotten Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival. Yeah. Oh bless your scattered little mind. Personally I can hardly keep track of the myriad of thoughts swirling about in my head, let alone important physical objects, so I am forever losing things, but fortunately I have a saviour. Extra has bestowed upon us the marvel of the first trackable wallet. Thanks to their ingenuity, my perpetual game of hide and seek with my belongings has become significantly less exasperating. Extra's super slim wallets with their dainty dimensions that shame their chunky traditional counterparts can snugly harbour over 12 cards in cash. And oh the ease of access, plus Rest assured, my dear, for their built-in RFID protection shield us from the nefarious clutches of data theft and wireless skimming. Not only that, but my beloved Parliament wallet has been fashioned from only the finest certified premium leather. But wait, there's more! With a credit card size tracker card add-on with its wallet and phone ring feature and worldwide lost and found network, it means that even for the most absent-minded fools, their wallet remains within reach. Pair this with voice activation using Siri, Alexa and Google, and with three hours of solar charge that last two full months, these products have a lot to offer. And if that weren't delightful enough, Extra is presently celebrating its anniversary of a sale offering a generous 20% off their wares. But wait, for I bring the tidings of even greater fortune. By utilising my charmingly bestowed co, Top Hat GM, you shall enjoy a princely 25% discount instead. So do not dilly dally, click the link below and acquire a wallet, bag or accessory that shall elevate each day to newfound heights. If you don't want to lose your wallet, then don't lose this deal. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival. What an absolute mouthful of a title for a game. While not overly mentioned today, this iteration of the all-time great would be notable on release for being the first new version of Street Fighter 2 for quite some time, simultaneously allowing for long-term fans to receive a nostalgia fix with a new twist while also allowing others to discover the franchise for the first time. Essentially, it was the first new iteration of a game in many years, which would finally revive the classic title with a brand new coat of paint for a new generation of gamers to experience. In the 90s, every updated version of this game was debatably better than the last. But the big question is, how does the first edition of Street Fighter 2 of the new millennium measure up to its predecessors? Well, to fully answer this question, we first need to have a quick recap of how we got here in the first place. Street Fighter 2 was first released in the arcades as Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior way back in 1991. The game would see many revisions released, tweaking the base experience slightly with each one. After the release of The World Warrior, arcades would next receive Champion Edition the following year, which introduced changes, including allowing players to control the four boss characters included in the game, the introduction of mirror matches, along with a number of balance tweaks refining the game's competitiveness. In December of that very same year, of 1992, fans received Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, a revision that is most notable for increasing the play speed as well as giving some of the characters from the game new special moves. The reason for two new iterations of the game seen released in the same year was due to Capcom taking inspiration from a popular pirate ROM hack of the game. Commonly referred to as Rainbow Edition, in these unlicensed versions players could throw multiple fireballs at once, switch between characters mid-match and most notably play at a faster pace than with Champion Edition. Moving on through the evolution of the series, 1993 saw the release of Super Street Fighter 2 for new challengers. The new challengers would mark a change for the title as it was released on the more advanced CP System 2 arcade hardware. This allowed for updated graphics and audio, but the most memorable inclusion was the introduction of four more new characters, bringing the roster count up to 16. The debuting Kami remains one of the most popular Street Fighters to this very day. Lastly, in the classic period in 1994, the world would get Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. 
which introduced loads more features, including powered up special moves called Super Combos, Combo Meters, and added a new hidden character in the form of Akuma. Inspired by the legendary Shane Long electronic game in Monthly Hoax, this secret boss from the end of a correctly performed playthrough is yet another character who remains beloved and an integral part of the franchise even now. With essentially the same game being polished and built upon over and over again, by the time we got to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, it finally seemed like there was nothing left to do with the title. The Street Fighter 2 cow had been well and truly milked, and after the live action movie, most of us believed Street Fighter 2 was behind us, and would wonder what was next for the series. Past this point, it seemed like Street Fighter 2's chapter in history had finally drawn to a close. Capcom would move on to other Street Fighter projects, such as the Street Fighter movie games, the Street Fighter Alpha series, Street Fighter 3 and its reiterations, and the Capcom crossover fighting games, all games I have featured heavily on here before. However, after seven long years, rather than accept Street Fighter 2 was dead and buried, Capcom would opt for a revival, introducing us to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival, yet another updated version of the beloved classic. Arriving on the Game Boy Advance in 2001, this marked the first new iteration of a game that had been engineered for a handheld rather than the arcade or a console. The Game Boy Advance was the perfect platform for receiving ports and upgrades of older titles. Replaying colourful games from the 16-bit era on a handheld for the first time provided many players with a much needed breath of fresh air, as they are both graphically and mechanically vastly different from the titles that were being released on consoles at that time. By 2001, 2D sprite-based gaming in the living room on a console had all but disappeared. 16-bit classics were not only being released to be played on the go, but for the most part many beloved titles of yesteryear were being packed out with new features, providing multiple reasons to pick them up. Playing the likes of Super Mario World, Link to the Past and Final Fantasy VI on the go for the first time had a huge novelty factor to it. A modern iteration of Street Fighter 2 on a Nintendo handheld was particularly appealing to some, as before this point in time the best Street Fighter game players had access to on the Game Boy was in the incredibly crude porting of the World Warrior for the original Game Boy. While the first iteration of the Game Boy lacked the capabilities to do the arcade great justice, the Game Boy Advance on the other hand boasted a blistering 16.8 MHz 32-bit ARM 7 processor, packed with embedded memory to propel gaming on the go into a new stratosphere. With its sheer might, it effortlessly rendered over 32,000 vibrant colours, bringing games to life in a breathtaking display of power and performance. To put it simply, the Game Boy Advance was almost perfect hardware to feature a return of a classic. With this in mind, let's dig into all the features that separate this version of Street Fighter 2 from others that came before it. If you've delved into the arcade and console iterations preceding this game, you'll immediately discern the meticulous attention to detail in Revival. Character artwork, including portraits showcased on the player select screen, receives a stunning makeover, tailored expressly for this 2001 handheld gem. Not stopping there, the title screen menu, options, life bars and even victory screens are painstakingly reconstructed from scratch, elevating the handheld experience to unparalleled heights. While many characters' voices are directly imported from the arcade version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Ryu resonates with his iconic voice from the World Warrior, and Akuma's commanding presence is bolstered by voice clips from the Alpha series. Essentially, a different selection of voice clips were accumulated for this game. Given the Game Boy Advance's distinct button layout compared to traditional arcade units, or even the Super Nintendo, adjustments were inevitable to tailor the gameplay seamlessly. Some moves from previous iterations were either omitted or modified to harmonise with the GBA's straightforward controls. To enhance accessibility, an innovative feature was introduced, enabling effortless execution of special moves and super combos with a single button press. This addition not only streamlines gameplay, but also marks a departure from the rigid command inputs of arcade predecessors, as every command in the game is now fully customisable, a groundbreaking inclusion for its time. Moreover, players can now embody both Akuma and his formidable counterpart, Shin Akuma, each equipped with their own unique super combos. Then there is perhaps one of my favourite changes and additions to the excitement, stage changes. Guile, M. Bison and Ken step onto the scene with brand new stages, injecting fresh energy into this title, but the stage revamps don't stop there. Balrog and chun Li stages are seamlessly ported from the Alpha series, paying homage to their iconic roots. And it's not just Alpha that gets a nod. Ryu's stage from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike makes a triumphant return, adding a depth to the game's capacity to deliver nostalgia, away from simply Street Fighter 2's past. I love this. 
Even the classic stages undergo subtle yet impactful changes too. Take Vega's stage for instance. The once static cage backdrop now sees the grid descending from above at the outset, setting a new dynamic tone. Furthermore, Vega himself faces a vulnerability and can lose his claw mid-fight, intensifying the stakes for both players. Returning to the fray are the beloved bonus stages, making a triumphant comeback after their absence in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And when it comes to executing super combos, the game pays homage to its roots with sound effects borrowed from Street Fighter Alpha, while also introducing captivating new finishing animations. Completing the playthrough unveils revamped character endings, adding layers to the narrative, and for those looking to hone their skills, a training mode has been thoughtfully integrated into the title, ensuring players can refine newly acquired GBA techniques to perfection. In order to develop this game, assets were pulled directly from Super Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo. However, in many cases, assets are also used from Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo's arcade version, since there was no version of 2 Turbo on the SNES. This can result in the odd glitch here and there, but nothing too worrisome. When glitches occasionally manifest, these can include characters momentarily enlarging during specific moves, a consequence of the disparate sizes of sprites between the two versions. However, these discrepancies underscore the extensive efforts poured into transforming Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo into the Revival Edition for handheld play. It's remarkable to witness the level of detail applied, especially considering the temptation to opt for a quick cash grab without adding the value of a genuine Street Fighter 2 experience on a handheld. Beyond the mere technical adjustments to accommodate the Game Boy Advance's constraints, it's evident that the developers invested genuine care into refining the gameplay experience. Their meticulous efforts extend far beyond adapting to memory space and button layout, enriching the title with thoughtful enhancements that truly elevate the handheld gaming experience. I admire the efforts that many developers used to go to when it came to reimagining 16-bit greats for the GBA. When this game was released, unsurprisingly, critics were very impressed with what this game could deliver on the move. GameSpot praised the game by stating, the arcade version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo is still an excellent game. It's aged elegantly, and it's still one of the most well-designed fighting games ever made. Therefore, having a 95% perfect version of that game in the palm of your hand is, by all means, a startling prospect. Unquestionably, Turbo Revival is a perfect choice for any Game Boy Advance owner looking for some great fighting action on the go. And for long-term fighting game fans who may not have a Game Boy Advance yet, this is the perfect reason to get one. IGN would also praise the game, concluding that Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival is definitely a good game for the GBA, and it's a no-brainer as a purchase if you're itching to get a little one-on-one -on -one action in on the handheld, especially if you dig the Street Fighter 2 series as a whole. While this title may not cater to every gamer, given the constraints of the GBA's button layout, it nonetheless stands as a captivating piece of gaming history. It represents a frequently overlooked chapter in the extensive saga of Street Fighter 2. In 2001, of its return after a considerable hiatus, the franchise re-emerged in the handheld realm with a renewed sense of sophistication and style. If you haven't had the chance to experience it yet, I highly recommend giving it a try. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and check out my video on the largely forgotten GBA Auto Beast sequel. Yeah! Cheerio!